In our last video, we talked about control charts using the continuous metric. Those are ones that can be measured. So we went over the X bar chart and an R chart. Now we're going to go over discrete metrics. These are control charts where you can count. So a P chart looks at the fraction defectives and a C chart looks at the number of defects. So one thing I wanted to point out um, is our X chart. We were looking at the mean. The R chart we were looking at the range, so range starts with R. A P chart, we're counting the proportion, okay, the proportion. And with a C chart, we can count. So we can count the number of defects or flaws or whatever it may be. So R chart range, P chart proportion, C chart count. That's why those are called what they are called. So let's now get a definition for the discrete metric control charts. So discrete metrics are counted. So that's our P chart and our C chart. A P chart control chart is used to monitor the percentage or the proportion of defectives in a process. It's used when observations can be placed into two categories like good or bad or pass or fail. Um, and when data consists of multiple samples of several observations each. So that's when you would use a P chart. A C chart is a control chart used to monitor, monitor the number or the count of defectives per unit. It's used when it's not possible to compute the population percentages. So you don't know the total population, you only know the count of either complaints or errors or, or dents or dings or things that have gone wrong. So you don't know the total population, you only know, you only know what you know, which is the number or the count of the defects. So that is when you would use a C chart. It's used only when the number of occurrences per unit of measure can be counted. The non-occurrences cannot be counted. So first let's go over a P chart. You've got your control limit. So your control limit equals your P bar plus and minus your Z and then your uh, standard deviation of P. Okay, so for this course, Z is given to you as three. That means your standard deviation, you've got a 99.7% confidence uh, in your standard deviation, so we will use a Z of three. Okay, remember that, put that in your notes uh, when you're taking your quizzes and your exams, that Z is always equal to three unless a different confidence level is given to you. So to calculate your upper control limit, it's, it's that formula we just discussed, but you're gonna be doing the plus, okay, P bar plus Z with your standard deviation of P. Your lower control limit is your P bar minus your Z multiplied by your standard deviation of P, okay? So once again, your upper control limit you add, for your lower control limit you subtract. To get your total number of observations for your P chart, you've got your number of samples multiplied by your sample size, that gives you your KN, so that's your total number of observations, and your K is your number of samples, and your N is your sample size. So that's how you get your total number of observations. To get your P bar, you're going to take the, your P bar is the average percent of defective in a sample, and that's, so you take your total number of defects over the total number of observations. Now we want to calculate our standard deviation of P, so we will have our P bar multiplied by 1 minus the p bar over our n, which is our sample size. I pointed this out on the last video, but if your lower control limit is negative, then 0 should always be used. And if there's varying sample sizes, use the sample average. Okay, so to create our p charts, we calculate the sample proportions for p for each sample. Next, we calculate the average of the sample proportions. Then we calculate the standard deviation of the sample proportion. Our next step is to calculate the control limits. And then our next step is to plot the individual sample proportions, which is the average of the proportions and the control limits. So let's do a P chart example together. Using a popular database software package, data entry clerks at Arco key in thousands of insurance claims every single day. 100 entered records are carefully examined to make sure they contain no errors. The fraction defective 
in each sample uh, was then computed. Samples of the work of the 20 days is shown below. Establish a proper control chart to make sure the data entry process is in control. Okay, so notice for this example, uh, if I were to take out p-chart example, I could give you this exact information on, a, on an exam, and I could say, establish a proper control chart to make sure the data entry process is in control. I didn't say make a p-chart, but you know, because I hid in the explanation, 100 entered records are carefully examined to make sure they contained no errors. So you know your n, your sample size, your n is 100. Your k, which is your number of samples, is 20. There are 20 days, so that is your number of samples. Don't flip-flop k and n, just like in the previous uh, recording. Your sample size is 100, that's your n, and your number of samples is 20, that's your k. Now, one thing you will have to do is add up all the number of incorrect records. So you're going to add 6 plus 5 plus 0 plus 1, and when you add up all of these incorrect records, the sum of all of those is 80. So now we've got all the information we need to start creating our p-chart. So our p, we calculate first our p-bar, and we do that. We've got our k, which is our number of samples, equals 20. Our n, which is our sample size of 100. So to calculate our p-bar, we're going to take 80 total defectives divided by 20 samples multiplied by 100 records, which was our uh, sample size. Our sample size was 100. So when you do that, you get your p-bar of 0.4. Now we need to calculate our standard deviation. So we now have all that information because we calculated our p-bar. So the p-bar, which is 0 0.04, multiplied by 1 minus the p-bar, which is 0 0.04, divided by our sample size, which is 100, and then when you take the square root of that, you get 0 0.02. Okay, so now you've calculated out your standard deviation of p. Now we can do our control limits. So let's calculate our upper control limit and our lower control limit. Remember, z was given to you, and z is 3. So your p-bar is 0 0.04 plus z, which is your 3, multiplied by your standard deviation, which is 0 0.02, equals 0 0.099, and in this case I've rounded up to 0.1. Your lower control limit is the same formula, but you're going to subtract instead of add, and that gives you negative 0 0.019. Now, don't let me trick you. If you recall, I said you can never have a negative lower control limit. So on an exam, you will see a correct answer of 0 0.10 as the upper control limit and a 0 0.019, a negative 0 0.019 as the lower control limit. And if you pick that answer, you'll be wrong because the correct answer has a lower control limit of 0. So you've now calculated your upper control limit and your lower control limit for a p-chart. Now let's plot it out, and you're going to have to use the fraction defectives, and to get that number, you take the number of non-conforming divided by your sample size. So for P1, you've got 6. Okay, That's your number of non-conformances divided by your sample size, your n, which is 100. For P2, you've got 5 non-conformances divided by 100. That gives you 0 0.05. That gives you your fraction defectives. Now on an exam, I am more likely to just give you this and tell you what the fraction defectives are. But let's plot it out and let's see how it looks. So we've calculated out our p-chart. We calculated our upper control limit to be 0.1. Our lower control limit is 0. Our mean is 0 0.04. And when we plot out the fraction defectives, we get most of them within an acceptable tolerance level, with the exception of day 17. Day 17 had 11 samples, or 11 complaints or errors, um, out of the acceptable range. So there was 11 errors on day 17 
that number, your fraction defective of 0.11, is over your upper control limit, which is 0.1, and so therefore this process is out of control. So that is how you calculate a p-chart. We've calculated out our upper control limit, our lower control limit, we've plotted them out, and you can see that this process is out of control because on day 17, there was a whole bunch of errors uh, that did not uh, fall within the control limits. And actually I said day 17, it's actually just sample number 17, not day 17. So they took 20 different samples, not 20 days worth of samples, 20 different samples. And in the 17th sample, there was 11 errors. Okay, now let's move on to a C chart. And C charts, more often than not, you do count days. Um, and the easiest way I think to think of a C chart is how many complaints are you getting? You use them a lot in service organizations because again, you don't know the total population of people served that are happy. You only know how many people are unhappy. So where P-charts monitor the proportion of non-conforming items, a C-chart monitors the number of non-conformances, the count of non-conformances. So these charts are mainly used in service organizations. And so our control limit is our C bar plus and minus the Z multiplied by your square root of your C bar. Your C bar is the average number of defects equals your total defects divided by K. Okay, so your total defects divided by K. So notice you don't see your N anywhere in here because you don't know your sample size. Once again, if your lower control limit is negative, then zero is used as your lower control limit. So let's do an example. Red Top Cab Company receives several complaints per day about the behavior of its drivers. Over a 25-day period, where days are our unit of measure, the owner received the number of calls from irate passengers. Calculate control limits and determine if this process is in or out of control. So we want to calculate our C-bar, and that's the average number of defects, which therefore is the total defects divided by K. So what's our K? Our K is number of days, which is 25. So we have a sample of 25 days, and that is our K. Our total number of defects, if you were to add up all of these complaints, 2 plus 1 plus 1 plus 0 plus 5, if you add up all the complaints over these 25 days, you get 51 defects or 51 complaints. And what is our sample size, our N? Right, we don't know it. So again, on an exam, if all, if this is all that I give you and I don't say C chart example, you will know that you don't know your sample size, you don't have your N, so you will calculate a C chart instead of a P chart. Okay, so now let's calculate out our upper and lower control limits and see if this C chart or if this process is um, in control. So our complaints are our defects. We got 51 complaints over 25 days, so our C bar is 2.04. So now we can calculate our control limits. Our upper control limit is simply 2.04, which is our C bar, plus 3, because Z is 3, Z is given to you as 3, multiplied by the square root of your C bar, which is 2.04. So for your upper control limit, you're going to take 2.04 plus 4.285, and that gives you an upper control limit of 6.325. Now, you use the same exact math below to get your lower control limit, but instead of adding them together, you're going to subtract. So now you take 2.04 minus 4.285, and that gives you a negative 2.245. Wrong. Don't go negative on your lower control limit. The lower control limit is zero. Okay, you've got your upper control limit, your lower control limit. So now let's plot out our um, control chart and let's see how many defects we have per day and see if we are um, in control or not. So we have now plotted all of the complaints per day. Our upper control limit was a little over six. 
our lower control limit was zero, and you can see that the count of complaints that we had normally averaged around two defects per day. On day 21 and day 22, our driver was clearly in a bad mood and got a lot of people upset with them, so therefore this process is out of control because on those two instances we had a lot more complaints than the average on days 21 and 22, so this process is out of control. All right, and that's it. We have now calculated out a p-chart and a c-chart. Those are our discrete metrics, and for those control charts, your data is counted.